Thank you. Uh, there we go. Please sit down. I'm going to. <laughs> There's a little story that they use in professional speaking. When a person has had an accident like this, I had a hip operation, so I need a walker. You walk on the stage and you say, before I begin, I want to tell you that in the book, The Joy of Sex, there's a major error on page 54. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I uh, was just being told, they told me that th these are the leaders, these are the movers and shakers, the drivers of this company. I, it's true. And he said, but there's something else that you don't know, is that they are all self-made millionaires. And I said, I said, wow. He said, yes. He said, everyone here is either a self-made millionaire or you intend to be in the future. Is that correct? This company is a millionaire maker company. Life Vantage is here to give you the tools one after another, like teaching you uh, to be a cook in a kitchen, the recipes necessary to become wealthy. And the only limit on what you can accomplish is determined by yourself. So I uh, started studying this subject many years ago when I was a, uh, beginning as a speaker. I got a call from a gentleman who had 800 divisions in his business all over North America, and they're all coming together for an annual convention, and he had surveyed them, and they wanted to know how to become millionaires. And so he called me and he said, could you uh, do a talk on how to become a millionaire? And I said, of course. When you're a junior speaker and you're starting off, you say, of course. I specialize in that. Whatever the subject is, stress management, family relationships, loss, weight loss, I specialize. I said, yes, I specialize in that subject. And he said, he said good. So I hung up the phone and then I realized I was about 37, 38 at the time and that I didn't know a darn thing about the subject. Ever since I was a teenager, my, my goal, my dream was to be a millionaire when I grew up, at the age of 20 and 25 and 30 and 35. And I was able to make a living. I was good at sales and good at marketing and so on, but I was so far away from becoming a millionaire, and now I have to speak on this subject to 800 business owners like yourself. So I spent two months, changed my life. I did two months full court press, and I read everything I could find on self-made millionaires. And I found that more than 10,000 self-made millionaires had been interviewed in detail. These are people who started with nothing and became millionaires in the course of one working lifetime. And they had said the things they did, the things they didn't do, the mistakes they made, the things that were not mistakes and so on. And I put together a talk and it was called the 21 Success Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires. And I got up and I gave the talk two months later and it got a standing ovation. And people asked me, could you give that talk to our company? Could you give that talk again? And of course, I said, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so I gave it again and again. And it started off as a 60-minute talk, and then a 90-minute talk, and then a half day, and then a full day. And I began giving the talk all over the world. And then I recorded it on audio and video. And I wrote it into a book form. And countless people, hundreds, thousands of people all over the world became millionaires. And it's very much like what I said before, is if you work with a master chef, uh, the chef can teach you how to make Absolutely beautiful dishes. So becoming a self-made millionaire, when I started off in 1980 studying this subject, there were about 5,000 self-made millionaires in America. Today there's more than 30,000. And the number is increasing about one every eight minutes. And 87% of self-made millionaires are self-made and they come from this type of business. So, so, uh, so, so, so they say if you, if you take 100 people at graduation from college or graduation from high school, one of those people will become wealthy in the course of their lifetime. Three will become well off. Uh, Fifteen will have a good deal of money set aside, and 80% will uh, be uh, working, um, dead or broke uh, at the end of their careers, at the age of 65. So when I was in my 30s, I did not graduate from high school. I finished in the half of the class that made the top half possible. Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was, they say every, everybody's good for something, even if, if it's to be a bad example. And I was, I was a bad example. They used to say, 
if you don't watch out, you'll end up like Tracy. If you don't watch out, you'll end up like Brian Tracy. And that would scare people into doing their homework. <laughs> and so I left school in the 12th grade. I got a leaving certificate, not a diploma, a leaving certificate. And it says, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those little emojis waving goodbye. <laughs> and so my first job was washing dishes in the back of a small hotel for a dollar twelve an hour. I remember when I got promoted to a dollar fourteen an hour. That was a major event in my life. And for years I worked in laboring jobs and I washed cars. I washed dishes until I lost that job, and then I washed cars until I lost that job, and then I washed floors for a janitorial service until I washed that job. And and when you're young, losing is an, another word for involuntary career redeployment. That's where you, you get a chance to explore new jobs unexpectedly. Today, they give you two weeks' notice. In those days, they give you about two minutes' notice. We won't need your services anymore. Here's your check. There's the door. Goodbye. And so I would go from place to place and worked, and I lived in my car, and I did all kinds of things. But I always had this fantasy undeserved, by the way, that I was going to become wealthy someday until I had this opportunity to speak. And as I began to study the subject, I learned some wonderful things that they're so simple, so simple, it means that everybody can become wealthy. Is What you need is a dependable source of cash flow. That's really important. And life advantage, life advantage is, a, is a wonderful source of cash flow because all you have to do is just pump the well and the cash flow just pours down. Just keep filling the buckets, keep filling the buckets. And this company has only one aim in life is to help you fill the well, is to um, pump the, um, the pump and uh, have the cash flow. Then the question is, what do you do with the cash flow? And that's a whole other thing. So I'm not going to talk to you about that. But what I found was that there were 21 secrets. And so I recorded these and I gave them as talks and so on. Everybody loves the subject of becoming wealthy. And people started to come back to me after as little as a year and say, because of your talk, I'm wealthy now. I'm, I'm, I'm a millionaire now. And they would come back and they had, their eyes, faces were shining and sometimes they had tears in their eyes. As I struggled and struggled and struggled. One year after I listened to your talk and began to practice those things, I became wealthy. Here's a couple of ideas and then I'm going to give you seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry and to becoming one of the highest paid people in our society and becoming wealthy. Uh, and the wonderful thing is they're not complicated. I'm not asking you to learn rocket science or anything. All you have to do is do simple things. What they found in the first major studies of thousands of self-made millionaires, they said, well, what is your secret? What did you do differently? And they all said something similar. All the self-made. By the way, we now have 2,000 595 billionaires in the world today. Uh, and we didn't have billionaires when I started off studying. Maybe had J. Paul Getty, uh, the oil uh, billionaire, but there weren't very many billionaires. Now there's 2,500. And 87% of them, according to Forbes, are self-made. These are people who started with nothing. Many of them were immigrants. They came to this country with nothing, and they started working, and they started doing certain things in a certain way, which we'll talk about, and they became First of all, millionaires. Here's, here's a one-liner for you, because many of you are already millionaires, is that the first million is hard, but the second million is inevitable. And when I learned that, and of course the reason for that is this, is you, it's not, as Jim Rohn used to say, he said, it's not becoming a millionaire that's important, it's the person that you must become in order to become a millionaire. You, you, you have to become a completely different person. You have to, you have to develop character beyond 99% of the people in the world. You have to develop honesty and discipline and, and quality relationships and, and the willingness and the ability to work and set priorities and, and all kinds of stuff because without that, nothing is possible. So once you earn your first million, then you've got, you are the person who can earn a lot of money, and the second million is, is not, it's never easy. Never easy, but it's easier. <laughs> the first million is really hard. The second million, not so much. So I found that there were 21 secrets. The first one of all is dream big dreams. 
It's, I couldn't believe it. Every single person who finally made it said the turning point in their life, they were driving down the road of life, not making much progress, which is that 80-20 rule that you hear. 80% of people make 20% uh, of the money, and uh, or, I'm sorry, 20% of the people make 80% of the money. And what happens at a certain point in life, they change and go on a different road. And here's the turning point. It is make a decision. Make a decision that I'm going to become wealthy. I'm going to become a millionaire. And I will work hard, long hours. I will sacrifice. I will pay the price. I will do everything that is necessary because you have this. You have a millionaire maker organization right here. The sole focus of this job is many wonderful benefits for users of the product, but the sole focus of this is for you to become wealthy by becoming successful so that you can do all the wonderful things that you want to do for yourself and your family. So make a decision that, by gum, I'm going to do it. And I realized at the age of 36 that I'd wished and hoped and prayed, but I never made a decision. I, I, I thought, oh yeah, maybe someday it'll happen. Maybe there'd be a miracle on uh, something. So I bought penny stocks or mining stocks and I did all kinds of stuff and not a darn thing happened. And then I found that the two things that millionaires say, number one is I was not more talented or smarter. I didn't get better grades than other people. He said, but I was willing to work harder than anyone else. I was willing to work harder than anyone else. I was willing to work harder, start earlier, work harder, stay later than anyone else. And you know, self-made millionaires on average work about 59 hours a week. They work about six days a week at 10 hours a day or, seven, or five days a week at 12 hours. There are very few wealthy people who work five days a week. In fact, there probably aren't any. Uh, they may work five days a week, but it's way after they've achieved their financial goals. The second thing they found is that um, uh, they were frugal, is they earned the money, but they didn't spend it all, is they saved the money. Because there's a time in your life where you can be generous. You can buy things, you can take trips, you can get new cars and new homes and, and, and a home in the mountains and so on, but not early. I had a banker once who was very helpful to me, and I still remember, his name was Alan. He said, we do banking for owners of small, medium-sized businesses, and we can always tell when the business is going to get into trouble. Is the owner of the business decides to take all his money and build a new house. He said, you can always tell because it's too soon. Is they spend their money too soon. If they waited another five years, they could have bought or built a house without a problem. But what they do is they start to get some progress and they start to go a little bit wild. So, your job is to become a self-made millionaire, and life Vantage's job is to help you get there, and my job is to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you the recipes and the formulas that you can use. And sometimes it just takes one choice. And remember, 87% of millionaires and billionaires are self-made. They started with nothing. And nobody's smarter than you, and nobody's better than you. Nobody's smarter than you, nobody's better than you. If somebody else can do it, especially with all the disadvantages that many people start off with. If someone else can do it, you can do it as well. That's the proof. Abraham Lincoln once said that some become wealthy is proof that all, that all can become wealthy. It's just the very fact that a person does well, it's proof. If they started with nothing and they became wealthy, well, there's the proof, you can do it as well. Just do the same things over and over again. So I wanted to get, share with you what I call the seven C's. And I began putting together formulas, and my formulas are threes, sevens, tens, twelves, and twenty-ones. I wrote 22 books, which had 21 great ideas to achieve this particular goal. 21 great ideas to double your income. 21 great ideas to uh, live to be 100. 21 great ideas to be a, a, an outstanding uh, manager. Uh, 21 great ideas to uh, meet and marry the man or woman of your dreams. That's very popular. Uh, and and I, just, I just did hundreds and hundreds of hours of research and wrote down all these one-liners. And people said, just one liner, one one-liner out of 21 changed their lives forever. So I'm a very, very hungry. I've spent about 150,000 hours studying. I study all the time. L yesterday on the way, my way up here from uh, Las Vegas, not Las Vegas, San Diego. My son lives in Las Vegas. I probably read uh, three and a half hours 
plus two hours before leaving, and I'll do another four hours of reading today is I just constantly taking in new information. Because one idea combined with your other ideas and with your opportunity here can transform your life forever. Yeah. And, and you just have to say, is this the idea? Is this the idea? So the first C is the C of clarity. Clarity is my favorite word in success. It's my favorite word in business. I have done consulting for more than a thousand corporations, large companies worldwide, companies like IBM and General Motors and PepsiCo and uh, Bank of America. I mean, big companies. And uh, I've also worked with more than 10,000 small and medium-sized companies. And what I found is in every single situation, problems occur when the company becomes unclear about what it is they're doing or how it is they're doing it. And so I've developed a program which is really just a fun program for me intellectually. It's called the Two-Day MBA. And it shows 10 different factors of uh, a company. And these are the ones that I learned when I went to university, back to university in my 30s. And I find that all problems come from lack of clarity. What is your product? It's the first question you ask. Who is your customer? What does your customer consider to be more valuable than anything else? How are you superior to your competitors? What can you do to attract more customers? How can you, what can you do to close those customers? I'll come to this in a second, but, but basically it's clarity, lack of clarity. Now here's something else I learned, and they did a study of 50 owners of companies, successful owners of companies like yourselves, and they asked them what is the uh, very best time management or business tool that you've ever discovered? 49 out of the 50 held up a, right, a, a yellow writing pad. A yellow writing pad, sort of like, like, like this. And this is what they did. This is how they planned their day. They made a list, to-do list today, today's date. They wrote down everything they had to do. They always work from a list, always work from a list, always work from a list. If you don't work from a list, it's very much like taking your hands off the wheel of your car going down a winding road in the mountains. What happens is your life's going to go up and you're instantly going to start doing irrelevant and unimportant and useless things. And at the end of the day, you'll be exhausted and you'll have accomplished nothing. Now, I know this doesn't apply to anybody here, <laughs> but it does happen. And so therefore, clarity is really important. Uh, we, we say in, in life that in life you have turning points. And I have written and published now 86 books because I developed a formula for writing and publishing books. I have uh, contracts for four more books, and I have two more books on top of the contracts. I haven't had time to get to it because my legs have sort of distracted me for a while, but I have book, book after book. Most authors, professional authors, write one book every two or three years. And I write and publish as many as four books a year. Every 90 days, I write a book, and I publish it, and I'm, I'm now published, I'm happy to say, by the biggest publishers and the best publishers in the world. And I don't, people say, oh, I'm going to write a book and become rich. You don't write a book and become rich, you write several books, <laughs> and you become well off. <laughs> because one book will, 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 will get people's attention, two books will prove that the first one wasn't a fluke. <laughs> Three will very often be the book that actually earns you some money, and then four and five and six. So people say, well, how can you write so many books? And I said, well, I have a system. I use a system like a recipe in the kitchen, and I follow the recipe. And the system requires clarity. What is the book about? Who is the book for? What are the subjects in the book that uh, are not covered somewhere else? Uh, what is the system and methodology and process? And no, I don't write fiction books. I only write nonfiction, which are basically do this and get this result. And then I will do hundreds of hours and hundreds of hours. So anyway, going back to my two-day MBA, what I'd found was that the number one reason why businesses are not successful, we're not talking about Fortune 500 companies, we're talking about one-person companies, is that just they're not clear about their business. They're not clear about every step of the business because they don't think on paper. Think on paper. The most powerful tool in the world is you, a pen, and a piece of paper. This is the greatest wealth creator in the world. 
And so you never, never pick up the phone. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you never answer the phone without something to write down. You, you make notes all the time. Make notes, make notes. Now, now you can actually capture all your notes on your um, uh, phone. But what I found is that if you write it down, it records into your brain, and your chances are you'll remember it. I found that if you do not, if your goals are not in writing, and one of the things I taught, and I've taught more than five million people, is write your goals down on paper, and write them down in the present tense as though you had already achieved them. I earn X number of dollars in 2019. I am a self-made millionaire by uh, 2000, uh, January 1st, 2025. I weigh X number of pounds. I live in a 5,000 square foot house with a separate bedroom for each one of my children. I, in other words, write it down as though it were already a fact and you're just reporting it. You're just reporting the fact. Your subconscious mind is, 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 is marvelous, but what it does is it only thrives on goals that you pronounce in the now, in the present tense. And so you now have a, a dynamism. It's called a, 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 a I'll think of the word. But this, it's a dynamism in your brain where your brain knows that you're only earning this amount of money. But now you're saying, but I earn this amount of money. Your brain knows that you're not a millionaire. But now you're saying, I am a millionaire. And so your brain goes to work to close this gap between where you are and where you want to be. And your brain starts to work 24 hours a day. And it works and it gives you ideas. Each person here has a, a what is called the a super conscious mind. And this mind has been talked about for 5,000 years. And some call it the, the oversoul. And some people call it the God mind. Some people call it God, spirit, whatever it happens to be. But there's this incredible power in the universe that you can tap into. You could just reach into it by simply writing down a goal clearly on a piece of paper. And then this mind goes to work 24 hours a day to bring it into your life. You've all read the books about the law of attraction and so on. Well, the fact is that once you are clear on a goal and you write it down, not type it, but write it down, is you force this uh, energy field of uh, attraction and it starts to pull into your life everything that you need to make the goal clear. But if it's not in writing, not a darn thing happens. And so I'm going to ask you, I sometimes ask people, say, please, 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 just do one thing for me, is write down your goals after this seminar, follow the instructions, I will give you an instruction, and by the way, we made available my goal setting formula online for everybody here, so everybody can go online to Life Vantage and get it, uh, and, <laughs> and because it, it, it will save you 10 to 20 years of hard work. You will, your life will transform. It's almost like taking some magic elixir. Your whole life will be different. So anyway, uh, what you do is, I said in, in life, every person has a turning point, and the turning point comes when you set upon a major goal. When you decide upon a major goal, and since you're going to be working for money in business all your life, you might as well set a goal to earn a lot of money. You see, in life, you can earn a lot or you can earn a little. And if you have a choice, I recommend to you that you choose a lot, okay? Because if you don't choose a lot, by default, you automatically get a little. And there's 80% of the population out there is wandering around and complaining about successful people, wah, 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 life's not fair, and so on. Uh, no, because once you are clear about your goal, you start to see all kinds of opportunities, things that you can do that you hadn't thought of doing that move you faster toward the goal and move the goal toward you. You activate this field of magnetism and you start to attract into your life people and circumstances who help you to achieve the goal and you help to achieve their goals. I mean, it's the most amazing thing. And, 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 and it is true and it has been true for thousands of years and it is the great secret of success. So let us talk about the Five, the seven C's, and I could spend all day on these, but number one C is clarity, is being absolutely clear who you are, which means what you want in life, what kind of a person you are, uh, what you believe in, what's important to you, uh, what you care about. You'll never be successful unless you're doing something that you enjoy and doing it well. Napoleon Hill threw this contribution onto the table in 1936. He said, do something that you love and do it well, 
and you'll never work another day for the rest of your life. You just never work again because you can hardly wait to get to work. You can hardly wait to do it because you love it. A turning point in my life, and I'm trying to give you a lot of stuff in the time that we have. A turning point in my life took place in about 1987, and I attended a seminar, and the speaker at the seminar said, talked about the importance of self-esteem. And what he said is, your self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself. And the more you like yourself, the more you like other people. And the more you like yourself, the more confidence you have, and the more willing you are to try different things. And the more like you, you like yourself, the less afraid you are of making mistakes. So you're willing to take chances with the possibility that you won't be successful. The more you like yourself. And the way that you build up your self-esteem is you simply say, I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. Say it. Say it. I like myself. No, no, no. Don't suck your thumbs. Say it. Say, I like myself. Yeah. Wonderful. And the most, the most powerful thing that you can do in this business is to help other people like themselves. And how do you help other people like themselves? You treat them well. You, you tr practice the golden rule. You treat them the way you would like other people to treat you. And so they feel valuable and important. And they want to be around you. And they want to accept your guidance. And they want to do what you instruct them to do. And they want to become successful as well. And, so the, and the more you like yourself, the more you like others. And the more you like others, the more they like you right back. And it becomes a positive upward spiral that makes you happy. The m wonderful thing about Utah and the religious proclivities, if you like, which I, which I admire so much, is the focus on the family and the focus on children. And the greatest thing that you can do for your children is to raise them up so they're self-confident and have high self-esteem. So they like themselves and value themselves and consider themselves to be worthwhile people. Isn't that true? And, and that's the most important thing in the world. I, I have been so blessed. I have the most wonderful wife. 40 years. Our anniversary is 40 years in June. And, uh, and, and, and Rita, by the way, who just came up here to get a check and the flowers. She prefers the check to the flowers. Um, she told me that. She is uh, just celebrating her 40th anniversary. Isn't that great? 40th anniversary? It's great. So we have four, four wonderful children, and we have never criticized our children or punished our children in their entire lives. We've had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart talks, <laughs> but we've never punished them and never criticized them. We've never done anything to take away their self-esteem and self-confidence. We've always told them what wonderful children they are. And now, three of the four are married. We have seven grandchildren. And they say, <laughs> my, 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 my friend Charlie Jones used to say, we have seven grandchildren, all males, except for six. <laughs> so, so I have one grandson and six grandchildren, six granddaughters and so on. But that's the most wonderful thing in the world. And what I see is my children grew up and they married people with high self-esteem who treat them as though they are valuable and important people and vice versa. And then they raise their children with high self-esteem. And how, you know how you can tell if you have a good relationship at any level of business anywhere is you laugh a lot. People in a good relationship laugh all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But it's so true. Isn't that true? Because you, 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 you can only laugh spontaneously. You cannot decide to laugh or plan to laugh or decide how long you're going to laugh. It can only happen spontaneously. It has to, it has to come from your heart. It has to come from your mind. So the very best relationships with other people is you just laugh all the time. And so you go into my home, and uh, especially when my kids were growing up, is my kids just laugh all the time. And the friends started to come over to our house all the time because in our house, everybody laughs. And the kids are happy. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Number one is clarity. So here are the seven keys to setting and achieving goals. These seven keys will make you rich. Key number one is to decide exactly what you want. Decide exactly what you want. And uh, the great majority of people really don't know what they want. They want to be rich, but what does that mean? How much is that? When? Uh, uh, how soon? Uh, what are you going to do to get it? 
So decide exactly what you want. If you're married, sit down with your spouse and decide exactly what you want. Two people working together, a husband and wife working together on a single goal, multiply the power behind achieving that goal more than anything else. It's called the, the great mastermind is the husband and wife working together. Anyway, number one is decide exactly what you want. Einstein said that if you cannot tell your goal to a six-year-old child and have the six-year-old child explain it to another six-year-old child and both of them understand it, then you don't know what your goal is yourself. So ask yourself, is your goal so clear that you could tell it to a six-year-old child and the six-year-old child would not only understand what the goal, and but could tell you how close you are to it. Great test. It's a great test. The Einstein test. Number two is write it down. Write it down, write it down, write it down. There's nothing more important than writing down your goals. Because if it's not written down, it's merely a fantasy. Now, they've done a whole series of studies at Harvard and Yale and Cornell and so on about the difference between students who type their notes and students who write their notes. The students who write their notes all get straight A's. The students who type their notes forget everything before the end of the day. Because writing forces you to use three um, abilities. Your, your kinesthetic ability, your physical ability of writing, your audio ability, you see it when you're writing, and your auditory ability, you say it to yourself when you're writing. So you activate the three major parts of your brain simultaneously, like a laser beam from a space station, zap, onto a piece of paper, and your subconscious mind accepts it as a command, as a command, and your superconscious mind starts to work on it 24 hours a day. Just write it down, write it down. And, and it's the most amazing darn thing. If all you did was write down one goal and leave this conference, your life would be different forever. And because there are all kinds of things will start to happen. And you'll say, well, that's a coincidence. I just wrote that goal down when I was in that meeting this afternoon, and then I got this phone call or something in the mail, or I saw something on TV, or so, it was just, it's just phenomenal. So step number one, write, decide what you want. Number two, write it down. Number three, set a deadline. Tell your subconscious when you want it. I want this by such and such a date. So every goal always ends with a use by date. In other words, I achieve this goal by this date. And you write it in the present tense. Number three is make a list. I'm sorry, number four, step number four, is make a list of everything that you can think of to do. Just make a list, and as you think of more things, add it to the list. Keep writing it down, writing it down. And sometimes you think of something in the middle of the night, write it down, keep a pad of paper next to your bed, and quickly write it down so you don't forget it. Just write it down, write it down. That's number four, and this is really important. It's the great turning point, like a massive ship turning in the ocean. Your whole life starts to turn when you write down a list of the steps you're going to have to take. I don't recommend other people's books uh, because I've written so many myself, and I... <laughs> I summarize uh, hundreds of books that I have read over the years, but there is one book that had a great influence on me, and it's called The, um, the, 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 the Checklist Manifesto. Anybody read this book? The Checklist Manifesto. It was written by a doctor, an emergency ward doctor, and he talks about the value of checklists when you are trying to accomplish a goal, build a business, raise a child, whatever you want to do, he says, create a checklist. He said, everything in the world, this room, a car, a swimming pool, everything is, follows a checklist. Everything requires a checklist to build it. And the wonderful thing about organizing a checklist before you begin work on a project, it has an extraordinary effect on your life. And what he does is he teaches in the most entertaining way how people who did not use checklists died, went bankrupt, uh, uh, the, the most successful people in finance, in the world, how they use checklists in order to organize their financial life, business people. Anyway, it's the one book that I would recommend. It's a short book. It's just fascinating reading. It's called The Checklist Manifesto. Anyway, so take your list of goals and organize your list by priority. Make a checklist. What, what's number one? What's number two? What's number three? And so on. And as you get more information, change the list. Reorganize it. Write it. Move things up and down. Step number five, or step number six, is to take action on your list. Take action on the most important thing on your list. Do something, launch, get going, do it now. Do it, in, do, do it immediately. Get up and do something. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be pff, revising your papers. It can be making a phone call. It can be ordering a book. It could be something. 
but do something, which is sort of like the kickoff in a football game. Just kick the ball off as far as you can. And number seven, and this is going to make you rich, happy, popular, and thin. Uh, number seven is do something every day on your most important goal. Do something every day on your most important goal. So here's the exercise I'm going to give you to take home with you and do when you leave this. And by the way, from now on, whenever you bring on a new person, put them through this exercise. If they will not go through this exercise, do not waste a minute of your time with them because they will never be successful if they won't follow your guidance. And, and here's, the, here's the exercise. Take a clean sheet of paper and write down goals and today's date, and then write down 10 goals that you would like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Don't worry about two years or 10 years or five years. Just 10 goals you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months, and write them in the present tense. Almost like you're, you're submitting an order. And just write down, I earn, I achieve, I weigh, I drive such and such a car, I own. Whatever it happens to be, and the goals will be financial goals, family goals, physical goals, and so on. Write down 10. And then you take this list of 10, and you say, if I had a magic wand, and I could wave this magic wand, and I could have any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Which one goal? And go over it. And usually this will jump out at you. It'll jump at, out at you like a, a spider in a horror movie. It'll grab you and put a circle around that goal. And that's a goal you transfer to a clean sheet of paper, and then you follow the seven steps. Write it down, set a deadline, um, write, make a list of everything you have to do to accomplish it, organize the list into a checklist, take action, and then do something every day. If you'll just do this, this simple exercise, then uh, you'll all be rich. You'll all be rich. Nothing, nothing can stop you but yourself. So number two. The second C is the C of competence. And the C of competence says, it's very simple, is that you can only earn a lot of money if you're very good at what you do. And so one of the most important things you do is you break down your work into skills. And you say, what are the most important skills I need to have to be successful? And there's recruiting is a very important skill. Training is an important skill. Managing, motivating is an important skill. Leading, supervising, important skills. So what you do is you think, what are the skills that I will need to be in the top 10% of my field? You don't have to be in the top 1%. Just be in the top 10% because there are no successful people who are not good at what they do. They are good at what they do, and they are good at what they do because they work at it all the time. Whether you're in sports or whether you're in music or chess or anything else, there's a wonderful uh, study that's been written up and it's called the, um, it's, it's called, da, 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 it'll come to me in a second. Um, I find that it, when I, with, because of these pains, I, my memory slips and it goes around in a circle like a merry-go-round and it comes around again and it'll come back and there it is. But basically what it said was studying the most successful people is that they, these people spend far more hours becoming good at what they do than average people. The other people don't do it. And that Everybody has natural abilities, but the ones who use those abilities transform themselves by really, really working hard at becoming good, one skill at a time. Now, this is another thing that's really important. Don't try to be good, good at everything, because what happens is you just break down. You just o overwhelm yourself, and you'll just give up. And you say, oh, I tried that before. I had an experience, which I'll pass on to you. When I was a young man, I was in my 20s, and I was in sales, and I was in cold calling sales knocking on doors every day. And uh, I was making one or two sales a week. I was living in a little rooming house with a bed and a floor <laughs> and, uh, and a little bathroom. And I was struggling. I could tell you within a dollar how much money I had in my world at that time because it was less than a dollar. And I worked, get up at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. I'd be waiting at 8 o'clock in the morning when people came to work. I would knock on doors, office doors, and, and business doors all day long. And then in the evenings, I'd go out and knock on homes and, and apartments. And I would make call after call after call. I made hundreds of calls and with no sales. The first year, I made more than 20,000 calls and only made a few sales. Just enough to survive. And then one day, I asked a question, which I'm going to help you with. As I said, 
of all the skills, what's holding me back more than anything else? And the answer was closing the sale, is that I couldn't get people to make a decision. I was enthusiastic and positive and, and everything you could want is, and so on, and people were very interested and friendly, but at the end of the conversation, they would say those awful words, let me think it over, or, let me think about it, or leave it with me, or can you get me some more information? The words I want to think about it mean goodbye forever. <laughs> we will never meet again. And I was getting this all the time, so I made a decision. I still remember the time, date, place, sitting in my little rooming house when I decided I was going to learn how to become very good at closing sales. And I began to read everything I could find. I sent away four books. I, I did everything I could find to study the psychology and the techniques and methods of closing sales. In one year, my income went up 10 times. Changed my life forever. I, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and some years later, and, 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 for, I, and I didn't know how to do it, and then I did. And because all skills are learnable, and you can learn any skill that you want to learn. And if, if, you, if you just simply uh, find out what others have done before you and, and, and practice it. And then I began to recruit uh, other salespeople and teach them the same thing. I said, here's the product, <clears throat> here's the advantages and benefits for our customers, and here's how to ask them to make a decision. And they became successful. Many of them today are millionaires and multimillionaires. Many of them own multiple businesses. And they've told me, they said, your training when I was in my 20s, going nowhere, broke, changed my life forever. And the most important thing was I, I got people just to make a decision. Got them to, I asked them to make a decision. So many people in this room, I know, have a challenge with closing. We all do when we start off. But that's where you are now, but that's not where we're going to be three months from now. Three months from now, you're going to be so dangerous, you uh, will need to be restrained for yourself and the safety of society. Uh, <laughs> Because you'll be able to close anybody on anything. And I'm not talking about pressure. I'm not talking about pressure. Do you know what good, what good, good business is, is here? It's helping. Is what you are is you are great helpers. You are helping people to improve the quality of their lives and their health and their family. And so when you start to see yourself as a helper, your job is to help people understand how much better off their lives can be if they take your advice and guidance. That's what you do. Earl Nightingale said something many years ago. He said, you don't get what you want in life. He said, you get what you deserve. And so I began to study that. You get what you deserve, deserve, deserve. And I found that deserve comes from the Latin. And it comes from the words de, which means from, servus, which from service. And so you get what you want in life from service to other people. And so the people who serve the most people the very best are the ones who make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. But here's something else, is when you help other people improve the quality of your life, your self-esteem goes up, and your self-confidence goes up, and you feel happy, and you like yourself more, and you like other people. It's the most amazing darn thing, is you just put your life on, on, on this wonderful upward spiral by deserving that people will buy from you, by looking for ways to help them. How can I help this person to improve the quality of their life and their family and their work. So see yourself as a helper, and your job is to deserve more. And you'll find, you look at the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates and the uh, multimillionaires who are individuals, and you think, these people focused. They had this obsession with a product of some kind that would really help people to improve the quality of their lives. And that's all they think about and all they talk about. And the only people who succeed in those companies are people who have this same obsession with customer service. Tom Peters, in his book, In Search uh, of Excellence, many years ago, he said the most important principle of all was the obsession with customer service. Is that the most successful and highest paid people just think about serving people and helping people improve their lives all the time. So that's the most important level of co competence that you want that you want to achieve. First of all, you have clear goals, and then you say, what is it that I really, really love to do that really helps other people to improve the quality of their life? And how can I become really, really good at doing that more and more of the time? The third C is the C of concentration. And these are not necessarily in order, but in, in a way, these are. 
The C of concentration is your ability to focus, which we've talked about before. It's your ability to focus single-mindedly on one thing at a time and to work on that one task until it's complete and to discipline yourself not to do anything else or to become distracted by emails and bells and bips and noises and things like that. It's just the ability to focus like a laser beam on a single task. I wrote a book um, a few years ago, and it was called uh, Double Your Income and Double Your Time Off, and I sent it to a publisher. And the publisher said, mm -hmm. you know, a book's title is really, really important. He said, well, it's an interesting title, but um, it's kind of bland. And one of the titles, chapter 15, is 21 Great Ways to uh, Stop Procrastinating and Get More Things Done Faster. And one of the chapters was called Eat That Frog. And Eat That Frog came from a, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know my book. It came, it came from uh, a story by Mark Twain where he said, if the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is you eat a live frog, you'll have the pleasure of knowing that's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. <laughs> and, and Mark Twain was just an incredibly good humorist. And he said, and there's two corollaries to that rule. Number one is if you have to eat a frog at all, it does not pay to sit and look at it for very long. <laughs> you know, get on with it. Get it over with. He said, and the second corollary is if you have two frogs to eat, eat the ugliest one first. <laughs> a good friend of mine from here in you know, Salt Lake, or actually in, in Salt Lake, um, says that the key to success is do the worst first. Eat the ugliest frog first. And I really like that. And so, the, so your job is to eat that frog. So my publisher came back to me, and he said, um, if you could take this title and take it and make it the title of the book and then run the theme of eating a frog, getting prepared, getting ready, picking the most important things, whereas all the way through, we could publish it as a book, and it might sell a few copies. Today, it's passed 10 million copies in 46 languages. It's, a, it's, it's the best-selling book on time management in the world. And I've had countless people come to me all over the world because it's in so many languages. And they say, this book made me rich. This book made our company the number one company in, 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 the, in Europe, number one company in the country. It made us rich. They said, the people, I, it made me double, triple, quadruple my income. People have transformed their lives by this simple concept. And the concept is, once you have determined the most valuable and important thing you can do, start with that first and do only that task until it's complete. Now, the first time that you try to do this, you will find it's quite difficult. Uh, Napoleon Hill um, did a subsequent book to his book, Think and Grow Rich, and it was called The Master Key to Riches. And after 260 pages, he gives you the answer, the master key to riches. In the first paragraph, he explains, in this book, you will learn the master key to riches. And so it's a whole book on motivational ideas and principles. And the last line of the last chapter of the last page is, now you know the master key to riches is self-discipline. And what we have found is that the most successful people uh, have come to that conclusion as well, is that self-discipline is the master key. To success. So for you to write down your goals and make a plan and set priorities and start with your most important task takes tremendous self-discipline. If you, if, you, if you haven't done it up to now, it's so hard. But Goethe said, everything is hard before it's easy. And everything at the beginning is difficult, but later it becomes easy and automatic. You have to force yourself to discipline yourself at the beginning, but after that, it becomes easier and easier, and you actually feel happy. Now, here's the most wonderful thing. When you discipline yourself to start and complete a task or a part of a task, you feel like an athlete. So here's my question. If uh, an athlete runs in a race and comes in first, what do they call this person? The winner. Exactly. I've studied this hundreds, thousands of hours. What it says is that when you win, when you come in as the winner, your body releases endorphins, 
which are called nature's happy drug, they make you happy, and dopamine, which is a form of energy that you get from a positive experience. So when you complete a task, your body releases these drugs and you feel happy. So they call it, nature, the psychologists call it nature's happy drug. If you want to be happy, just start and complete a task. And you get, you get a, a zip. Wow. Wow. You feel happy. So I, I organize my life. So I organize my tasks. Da, 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 da. And then my wife, Barbara, will come in and say, uh, we're going to have dinner in 10 minutes. So I say, okay, 10 minutes. Let's see, what have I got here that will take 10 minutes? Uh-huh. I can do this in 10 minutes. So I'll always end my day with a completed task. This is a real simple thing, and I, I've done it. I tick it off, complete, down, and I'm happy. And I walk out, and I'm smiling. When, when you make a person feel like a winner, you feel happy. When you discipline yourself to complete a task, you give yourself a buzz. Alfred Adler, one of the top psychologists of history, called this a positive addiction. He said, if you start and complete a task, you get a buzz. And the buzz becomes addictive. You start thinking, no, I want that buzz again. But the buzz is a positive addiction in that it makes you happy when you do it. So every time you start and complete a task, you feel like a winner. And when you feel like a, a winner, you want to do it again and have that winning feeling. If you want to raise happy, healthy, self-confident children, one of my programs, 21 Great Ways to Raise Happy, Healthy, Self-Confident Children, one of my 21s, is what you do is you make your children feel like winners all the time. If you're happily married, make sure that your spouse feels like a winner all the time. How do they feel like a winner is when you praise them or compliment them, thank them for what they did, acknowledge their success, whatever it happens to be, make them feel like a winner. Because every single time you start and complete something and it's acknowledged, the person feels like a winner. Do you know that the greatest speed records, Olympic records, are always broken in front of the biggest crowds? Interesting point. The biggest crowds. You get 10,000 people, you get a record. You get 50,000 people, wow. 100,000 people, they break all the world records. Because the greater the amount of praise and, 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 and that you get from uh, winning a race or potential winning for a race, the faster people run. Interesting thought. So those are the first three. Clarity, be absolutely clear about your goals and what you need to do to achieve them. Um, and competence, become very good uh, at your tasks. And, and number three is uh, concentration. Concentrate single-mindedly on your most important task and stay with it until it's complete. By the way, I could speak for two days just on concentration. And I have taught these principles all over the world, but that's all that you need. Start and finish your most important task. Number four is constraints. Now, constraints is, is a concept that was developed in Tel Aviv by a management consultant many years ago. And it says that between where you are today and where you want to be sometime in the future, a goal, is there is always one constraint or choke point that determines the speed at which you get from here to here. That's the constraint. So the art of life is to identify the constraints that are holding you back from achieving the goal that you want to achieve. And it could be something simple like finding a parking space. It could be something simple like getting your shopping done and so on. Keep, continually ask, what is the constraint or limiting factor is what they call it, the limiting factor between here and where you want to go. So you say to yourself, all right, you want to achieve a particular goal. So you ask yourself, what is the one factor that determines the speed at which you achieve that goal? What is the one factor that determines the speed at which you achieve your most important goal? And you work with your downline, you work with your uh, consultants, you work with other people, and you help them to be absolutely clear. And don't try to change the world. Try to change one thing, one factor. Try to alleviate that one factor, uh, and that will change your whole life. It's unbelievable. So you say, all right, let's talk about selling. And I could speak about selling for days and days as well. Let's talk about selling. Well, we want to... Um, earn more money. Do we want to earn more money? Say yes. yes. Uh, I, 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 how would you like to double your income effective this next week? Yes. So, okay. I, I have, a, four, I have a, a seminar that I do, by the way. It's seven ways to double your income uh, in the next seven days. 
and it's all based on hundreds of hours of research and blah, blah, blah. But it's, I'll give you just one. I was thinking I could, spend, I could spend the whole day on the seven, but I'll give you just one. Is what determines your income today? What's the constraint? What's the factor? Well, the limiting factor is the number of people who you sign up to join the business. That's pretty much it. Oh, it could be something different, but let's... Or it could be closing the sale. Is getting that person to come on board and become active and get busy and start um, talking to other people uh, and both using and selling the product. Figure out what it is. But let's just say that it is the number of people that you talk to on uh, a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And I give this little formula when I'm talking to sales audiences. And in reality, we're all in sales. And I say, the average person in America who earns a full-time living from sales, and sales is on their business card, about 17 percent of the population, uh, spends about 90 minutes a day talking to new potential customers. 90 minutes a day. And this goes back to 1928, all the way forward, 90 minutes a day. Well, there's eight hours in a working day, so that means the person is spending one-fifth of each working day talking to new potential customers. So if you want to double your income, it's very simple to do. And you all know what the answer right now is spend 180 minutes each day talking to new people. Now, you can't control or determine which one of them is going to buy or join or something else, but you know that if you speak to enough people, enough people will join or buy or become customers or become distributors and so on. So therefore, just double the number of minutes. I call this Brian's minutes theory. Double the number of minutes from 90 minutes to 180 minutes. Or if you're working whatever number of minutes today, and you could calculate that, track it, for a week, for every day, track how many minutes you're spending talking to new people about this business, is then double the number of minutes. Now, you can't double the number of minutes overnight. It may take you a week or two weeks. But my promise to you is that if you double the minutes, you'll double your income. If you double the minutes you spend face-to-face, head-to-head, eye-to-eye, ear-to-ear, you say knee-to-knee, heart-to-heart, if you double the minutes, you double your income. And I've had countless people come to me and, and, and it's interesting, they come up at the seminar and say, that's a bunch of BS. I've been in my business for years. This competition is so tough. You can't double your income, just blah, 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 blah. And then I come back six or 12 months later, and they come up to me and they said, you remember me? And I don't. Uh, <laughs> but they say, I told you it was a bunch of BS about doubling your face time and doubling your income. The week after I went out, I said, I'm going to prove that person's wrong. I'm going to prove that he's just an, a dork or something else. And uh, he said, the following week, I doubled my income. After eight years in my field, I doubled my income. I said, he said, I couldn't believe it. He said, he said I taught my other friend, told my other friends how I did it. They, I was now the top salesman in the company. I told them else to do it. And everybody who did it doubled their income. And then if you, once you double your income, what do you do? You, you, you double the amount of time you're spending, and you spend it on, with better people. Okay, now I'm running out of time. Damn, damn, damn. So I'm going to give you the, the other principles that we have. The uh, number five, number, number, number four is constraints. Number five is continuous learning uh, and development, is dedicate yourself to becoming better and better at what you do. It must be a part of your life. You must breathe in, breathe out, and learn new things. Self-made millionaires, self-made billionaires spend 60 to 90 minutes every day studying their field, reading new material. Uh, Warren Buffett was just relegated from number three to number four, richest man in the world. And Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. Warren Buffett reads five to eight hours a day. Warren Buffett reads eight hours, eight, eight, seven days a week. He reads all the time. And he's one of the richest men in the history of the world. And he and his partners all say the same thing. You, you've got to read. Read and learn all the time. So part of your life, don't, re don't ever listen to the radio. I say you should never even know if your radio works in your car because you never listen to it. The CDs that are available to help you become better are unbelievable. You can download them with Audible and put them onto your iPhone. You can listen to them in every part of your life and one idea can make you rich. So just keep flooding your mind with new ideas. Number six is um, commitment. Uh, and we know this because you've talked about it a lot is commitment is really important. There's no success without commitment, without you putting your whole heart 
into what you're doing and putting your whole heart into what you're doing for a long time. But if you do, there is no limit on what you can accomplish. As you get up in the morning and you make a decision that, by gum, I am going to succeed in this business no matter how long it takes, no matter how many hours a day. And number seven is courage. And courage, Winston Churchill said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it all others depend. And in courage, what you have is two parts. The first part of courage is the courage to begin, to launch, to take a chance, to face failure and rejection, to try something with a very great possibility that you will fail and you'll feel embarrassed and upset and your self-esteem will go down and so on. But the second part of courage is persistence. It's the power to keep going and keep pushing yourself and driving yourself. And I had a tra transformation many years ago, which I will give to you. A woman that I was going out with before I was married, she asked me, Brian, she said, what is your best quality? And I thought about that, and I, th I, said, I said, I think my best quality is that I never give up. And that's your best quality. She's a very insightful woman. I still remember her. Very intelligent. Your best qual my best quality is I never give up. And so I've spoken to audiences like you, and I have found that that's true, is I never give up. And my children never give up. It's, it, it's not in our vocabulary. We never think, we'll try something different. We'll try something new. We'll uh, take the losses and so on, but we'll never give up. So how do you develop this unshakable quality of persistence, which will guarantee your success in life? Nothing can stop you if you don't quit. If you don't quit, then the only alternative is you must succeed, and eventually you must succeed greatly. Well, the great rule, you become what you think about, but you become what you say to yourself. So what you do is you say to yourself these magic words. You say, I never give up. Say it, say, I never give up. I never give up. I never give up. I like myself and I never give up. You repeat that over and over and repeat it to your kids. I love you and you never give up. Repeat it to your downlines. Repeat it to your friends. Make it something when people say, well, I don't know a lot about him or her, but I know one thing is he or she never gives up. <laughs> they will not stop. They will keep coming at you like a bulldog. They will never give up. If you never give up, my promise to you, my guarantee to you, is that you are going to be an enormous success in the months and years ahead. And I hope you are.